Hello there. How are you today? My name is Dana Damara. And this is a little combined astrocast. This is your weekly forecast, but it's also a recording for the new moon Aquarius. And the reason I'm doing that is because the week, this coming up week, actually starts off with the new moon Aquarius right after Venus stations direct, right before Mercury stations direct. Uh, so many aspects. So I'm going to show you the picture in a second. I'm like super excited about this one. <laughs> super excited. There's a lot of transits with this new moon that are um, invigorating, but also uh, instigating is the word I'm looking for. Okay. So welcome to your new moon forecast and also welcome to your weekly forecast. So the theme that, or the word that kept coming up for me with this is sovereignty. And I'm also doing that in my study with Elena Brower. So that could be why, but I, I don't think so. Uh, I kept reading through what was going on this week and it really is this energy of being sovereign unto oneself. It's um, allowing yourself to be completely free from the past, completely free from judgments of yourself, completely free from um, you know, ideas that you've had about yourself, completely free from a, a person, a situation, whatever it is, but being completely sovereign in yourself, like relying completely on this intuitive force that lives in your body that we so forget about because what are we doing? Looking outside of ourselves for something, right? And we all do it. I mean, I, I do it. I look to the stars, like, can someone please make sense of this for me? <laughs> you know, um, but let's remember that we are, we are these sovereign beings, these little souls living in our earth suits, cruising around the world with 7 billion other people that have jobs to do too. But we can be in our own self, our own path without having to get all enmeshed, commingled caught up in everything else but I want to tell you what's going on in the stars <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen <laughs> oh my god it's so fun I feel like I was um experiencing like a um a uh there we go like out of body experience when I was looking at what was happening it just I can't actually, I can't. Okay. So uh, new moon Aquarius. So the new moon is new because it's uh, sitting right next to the sun and it's sitting right next to the sun in Aquarius at 12 degrees. 12 degrees is an interesting number. 12 degrees is about um, kind of resting taking a pause, but getting prepared to pounce for that next thing. And the new moon Aquarius actually happens at, um, well, it depends on where you are. This is run uh, for San Diego, which is 946 on January 31st, but 946 PM, but say on the East coast, it's 1246 AM on February 1st. So the numerology might be a little bit different and energy might be a little bit different, but overall we have some pretty uh, powerful aspects here. So uh, it, it does happen. The new moon happens um, in between two months, depending upon where you're at. So for some of us, it's still January. And then for others, it's February, which is kind of cool to think about and contemplate and have discussions about, uh, but we're not going to go there today. What I will say is that it, the, the new moon happens right after Venus goes direct. You know, Venus has been in retrograde uh, for quite a while now, December 19th. And then um, it's also right before Mercury goes direct. And after Mercury goes direct on February 3rd of next week, please remember that it still has a shadow stage. So even though, I'm going to stop share, even though um, Mercury is going direct on uh, February 3rd, there's still like the shadow stage, right? But point is, is that the new moon is happening right in between those two. And on February 3rd, when Mercury goes direct, all the planets will be direct with a new moon in Aquarius, the sign of air, speed, <laughs> and everybody go. That's the energy. <laughs> and you don't want to be commingled with everybody else's stuff 
when that is like happening because then you know four years from now you're going to go shit i'm on someone else's path this really stinks okay so that's why I, one of the reasons why i picked sovereign um many reasons why i picked sovereign okay so we have this new moon and uh sitting in aquarius but i want you to look at this too saturn hey hey saturn just to remind us that there are rules to follow and um uh things to do and systems and structures to abide by you know blah 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 but saturn really is kind of the um rule maker and sometimes we don't like what saturn has to say you know saturn's been very at the forefront of the last two years and but saturn kind of holds the key you know like saturn is the one that's like look guys these systems are are working these systems are breaking these systems are this this is what's happening it's the lord of karma lord of time and so just be aware that saturn is is conjunct this new moon it's sitting there it's just allowing us to um uh be reminded of some rules and some restrictions that are either being placed upon us or that we are placing upon ourselves but saturn has a really sweet side too saturn just wants you to live your purpose so saturn like recognizes your hard work looks at your energy of especially with the new moon because remember it's conjunct the sun and the moon okay and so it's really about um like yay you look at you you've done this you've done this check 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 um so kind of take a moment to before this new moon in aquarius whooshes you away take a moment to um a couple things one recognize where you're still holding yourself back okay recognize where um, there are some systems at play in your life that no longer really fit the mold of where you want your life to go now uh, and thank them and bless them and move on. And then also recognize the things that you've done to get here. Like if you're sitting here listening to an Astrocast in February, uh, January of 2022, after the two years we've had, start making that list of accomplishments because it's been a bumpy ass ride. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen again. And again, those of you who are new to this with me and uh, I'm, I, I'll, I apologize for cussing, but it happens sometimes, so I can't help myself. Um, okay, so that's the um, conjunct to the new moon with Saturn. And then we have that bugger almost it's five degrees uh, square to Uranus, okay? Actually, Uranus is more squaring this new moon than it is uh, Saturn, but they're all commingling. Now, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, so Uranus is the higher mind, the planet of change, the planet of liberation. So that's why we've had this Saturn-Uranus square for, I don't know, all of 2021, and it was almost like every single lesson that we not lesson every single restriction that we place on ourselves either individually or collectively would like pull away and then come back in and then pull away and come back in and then pull away and come back in three times last year okay on specific days you know and that's a global thing too you can read into that however you want uh but i don't want you to be concerned about global i want you to be concerned about you like where are you craving freedom? Where are you craving to be liberated? Where are you wanting yourself to be free from the emotional patterns of the past, the emotional residue of the hurt, the um, pieces of you that you've kind of strewn about in all the things that you do or all the, the roles that you play? Like what is really in alignment with your divine purpose? You know, because remember Uranus is higher mind. I'm gonna go ahead and um, share the screen. And Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So this is a very much about looking at your attachment to things, to people, to places, and really allow yourself to um, reform your life in a place of complete sovereignty. Elena Brower, I've been listening to her, um, I joined her mentorship and um, she talks about this feeling of sovereignty 
it, it's royalty. So where are you allowing yourself to feel royal and connected? And that falls into play here in a minute with Venus too, right? So we have this whole Venus energy too happening where what we value, and remember Venus is coming out of retrograde on the 29th. So whatever relationship stuff you have been working on since December 19th, it all comes back to what you value, how you value yourself, what you value in your life, your friendships, your love relationships, your money, your finances, how you want to put yourself out into the world. All the lessons have been presented to you on, a, I was going to say a silver platter, but it's really not that way. It's more like a compostable plate and you get to like, pick out the things that still work for you and compost the rest, literally compost the rest. Um, so I'm going to talk about Venus. Venus is actually trining um, Uranus uh, with this. So Uranus is super active. Venus is trining Uranus with this um, new moon. And it, this is really about allowing yourself to, um, to maybe take on like a new creative project or um, allowing yourself to feel joyful and abundant and, you know, being excited about something new. We just ended this Venus retrograde where it's like, what are the big lessons? What are the big takeaways about myself that I learned during this time? And now that I've left some of that behind gratefully, respectfully, lovingly, what can I do or how can I use that energy now? Not what can I do? I don't like to say, what can I do? Because I don't, want us to ever feel like we have to be in a sense of doership, right? Thank you, Tosha Silver, for that one. Doership. I love doership. Um, the other aspect that I really want, oh, and then the other thing I want to say about Venus, which is right here. Um, is that at 11? Let me look. Hold on. Yes. Oh, of course, it's 11 degrees. Uh, 11 degrees Capricorn. So if you notice, first of all, we have a stellium uh, in Aquarius. Uh, a stellium is three planets or more in one sign. And we also have a stellium in Capricorn. So we have Pluto, Mercury, uh, Venus, and Mars. Now, Venus and Mars are going to, and I want to say this now because I think it's important to note, Venus and Mars will conjunct each other uh, on February 16th, okay? So when Venus and Mars conjunct each other, first of all, it's like the sacred uh, masculine and the divine feminine coming together in union, um, coming together to work together uh, as a team, coming together in love, coming together in grace, coming together in like, wow, girl, I see you. And she's like, yeah, you're a stud. I see you too. And then they allow themselves to become balanced uh, when they conjunct each other. Let's just think of it that way. They kind of, they're in like a supportive state when they square each other. Um, they tend to forget um, how great the other one is, right? For lack of a better explanation. So now here they're going to conjunct each other on February 16th. Oh, right after Valentine's Day. And uh, if you celebrate that, and then they try and Uranus. Okay. And I'll, I'll just show you that on the screen. I like looking at the screen. It helps me because um, then I can remember what's happening. So they try and Uranus and Uranus is in Taurus. Uranus is change, liberation, Taurus is home, health, hearth, like, so really allowing yourself to balance those energies within you, the sacred masculine and the divine feminine and asking yourself, like, what do I really value? And how can I allow this energy to kind of take me over and move me to my next thing? Okay, that's going to happen on the 16th. But the other aspect I want to talk about that is super important is this Mercury conjunct Pluto. Now, Mercury conjunct Pluto, I don't think it's exact that day. I want to say it might be on the 30th. It might be on the 30th uh, that they exactly conjunct each other. Um, again, I believe that is the date. Could be wrong. Anyway, it's not important. They're close enough to say Mercury is conjuncting Pluto. Now, Mercury is the lower mind day-to-day -day or communication skills, and Pluto is deep. Pluto is lessons. Pluto is empowerment. Pluto is sovereignty. Pluto is this teeny planet that has so much freaking power. It's like amazing, right? So Pluto is going to add depth to anything that has to do with communication. Now remember, Mercury goes into or uh, goes direct on the third. 
So when this happens, when Pluto conjuncts uh, Mercury, when they conjunct each other, it's possible that you could have some profound insights or discoveries about some sort of topic that you've been working on. I don't know what it is. I know what they are. I know what it, this lesson is for me. Like it's so apparent. It's like in my lap on a silver platter, right? But ask yourself, what are the lessons I've been practicing and learning and maybe struggling or suffering with during Venus retrograde? And how can I allow this sense of, um, you know, this, this Venus, um, I mean, this Mercury and Pluto transit of the conjunction help me in seeing the deeper meaning and then allow me to really set some new systems in place where I'm utilizing my sovereignty and I'm not bogged down in this. I don't have to like turn the cheek and push away or, you know, condemn. I can say, wow, that was amazing. I have this new discovery about blah, blah, blah. And now I can move forward like this. Keep in mind after February 3rd, everything is going to go so fast. Like I can't even tell you so fast, like things are going to just start flying through the universe. <laughs> um, you know, when you, when you have those experiences where you think a thought and then uh, within like minutes, it's manifest. Yes, that would be the energy. So be mindful of where those thoughts are. Be mindful of what you're focused on. Be mindful of where you put your creative energy. Be mindful, cut the old ties. It's all old. It's like an anchor, like snip, snip, snip. Let it go. Sovereignty. Um, beautiful new moon to set intentions about what you truly desire in this life. It always is, but this one is like a big, huge reset. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have really for you. I, I think the biggest thing to remember is that it's a lot of energy and planets have a dark and a light, just like everything. Everything has that sense of polarity. So um, remember that Uranus can be a bit impulsive. Uranus can be like that little toddler that's like, let's do this. This is so much fun. I have this great idea. I'm going to follow it, right? Um, thank God for Saturn because Saturn's like, hey, really? Is this, is this old? Is this really what you want? Like use that energy to discern what's important. Don't be impulsive. Don't like push the river. Don't um, hurry because when the new moon's happening, we're still in Mercury retrograde. So just, oh, isn't that interesting? I think I'll write that down, <laughs> right? Oh, look at me being distracted by such and such a program that's only $33 for the next 24 hours. Do you really need it? Or is it just interference, right? So allow yourself to be like a, um, a no bullshit beacon, like don't need it, don't need it, don't need it. Yes, need that, mm -hmm. yeah. And then allow your this new moon to kind of unfold because when Mercury goes direct, it's gonna be like a whoo, and you don't wanna be experiencing interference or baggage that's not yours. Like you only wanna have like your stuff, okay? All right. I think that's it. That's all I have for today. I want to thank you so much for listening. I just, I never know who listens. I don't like pine over my insights and my readings, but if you do find this interesting, I would love for you to share it with your friends and uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that that little bell goes off when I um, send you all the information. Plus it helps me because once we up our numbers at, at YouTube, I think I can start offering like some really fun stuff. And I don't know what that looks like, but we could give it a try, right? Um, I am not hosting a, a new moon circle uh, this time around, uh, but I will be back at Alila for the full moon in February, February 16th, when Mars and Venus conjunct each other. Won't that be fun? So all the information uh, to get a hold of me is on my website at damiedemara.com. 
And if you want your chart read, you can reach out there too. In the meantime, I just, I hope you have like the most epically beautiful, magnificent day. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Namaste.